Arturo, on the floor of AUVSI 2014, there's certainly no lack of interesting things to see. But with the amazing capabilities being brought to fore by a number of companies looking at the unmanned air vehicle market, it's interesting to see something with VTOL capability. Tell me, if you will, uh, a bit about the AV-1 Albatross. The AV-1 Albatross is our main platform. It's uh, being developed uh, to be as flexible as possible. And the ultimate in flexibility right now we have been developing for, for the past couple of months is the VTOL capability. We attach two pods to our main platform, and which gives it the vertical takeoff and landing capability. So now, with our main platform, the Albatross, you are capable to vertically take off and land and fly for up to 20 hours. Tell me about uh, the overall system architecture. Okay, so we have two main power plants. They are gasoline fueled, one in the front, one in the back, uh, mainly for redundancy. No problem if one engine shuts down, the other one will take over and we will have enough time to land. We work with several partners to integrate the automatic pilot. Depending on the client, we will integrate any automatic pilot that the final client wishes. Are you looking at autonomous VTOL capability or is that still something that's going to require specific guidance? The video that you are watching right now, there is an RC person controlling the unit because we are in the very early stages of development of the vertical takeoff and landing capabilities. But this will be totally autonomous. You will need to press one button, the aircraft will take off, do its mission and land. Where do you see its main usefulness? Actually, our business model is we do not sell to the end user. We work with companies that sell to the end user because there are so many applications that we cannot possibly cover all of them. The missions that are most likely to be accomplished by the unmanned air vehicles are the ones that cannot be performed by manned vehicles. Those are the cases for which our platform was built because you cannot ask a pilot of a small aircraft to fly for 10, 12 hours. What kind of sensor packages have you gotten any experience with so far? We have experience packaging basic cameras with high zoom, gyro stabilized cameras, and the rest of the sensors, and there are many, 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 there are sensors that are able to sniff petroleum. There are sensors that are capable of detecting the health state of a particular plant. We have not de fully developed those because that's the job of the developers, of the, our partners. About how long do, can we expect before these are deployed to the field? Well, much depends on the regulations. The FAA has the mandate to, to have the regulation ready next year. And we are really hoping that that is when the civilian applications of this technology will actually explode. In the, in the same way as the normal aviation really took off when the civilian applications were developed, we strongly believe that the UAV market will take off when the civilian applications are readily deployed by any company. Alrighty, I thank you much for your time. We look forward to following uh, the progress of the AV-1 Albatross, and I'm particularly interested in seeing the uh, bigger version of this in VTOL mode. That should be pretty exciting to watch. Thank you. Aero TV is brought to you by... Finally, the extraordinary story of the world-changing XPRIZE space competition is being told and illustrated with hundreds of insider photos in Jim Campbell's colorful new book, Beyond the Blue. Journey with Jim as he flies formation with spaceships, plays in zero gravity, prepares rocket racers, and documents the amazing first decade of the personal space race. Available this summer. Get your advance order in now by checking out www.kindredspirit.com.